All right, everybody, these are for the people who are like scholars or love lore or philosophers, whatever you want to call yourselves, because I am kind of a scholar. Um, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. Um, that's why I'm in college for, and most of my classes are like, you know, big scholar classes. So um, this is really important to me, and I don't know if this is important to you. I know it's important to one person that I know of, but, you know, if there's anyone, new viewers or anything, they can watch this. And so I'm giving this for you guys. So um, explanations. Uh, why did we wage war on the Naravine? Why did I try to kill you? Because you threatened the faith of my followers. And I needed their faith to hold back the darkness. And I thought you were my enemy. A pawn of the subtle Daedric Lord Azora. Or a pawn of Emperor Euro Septim. Or a simple fraud. Perhaps a hero. But not to one if my faithful could destroy you. Now circumstances are altered. I need you. And you need me. Right, why did you try to suppress them? Why did I suppress the Agrifa? Because it was such an unfortunate mixture of truth, falsehood, and speculation that I couldn't afford to manage the confused reaction of our faithful. Any doubt whatsoever weakened their faith, and we needed their faith to give us the power to maintain the ghost fence. In retrospect, perhaps we lost the faith of those we most needed, while preserving the faith of the meek and indifferent. Perhaps a mistake was made. Who can say? Uh, why did you persecute the dissident priests? Suppression and persecution of dissident Dissent is just one of the standard tools of statecraft. Believe we erred in trusting the judgment of Baro Salah. He and his ordinaries served valiantly in the war against Dagopur. We mistook his misplaced zeal for energy and dedication. Mistakes were made, but no more. There shall be no more persecution of the priest. I hope both sides shall swiftly be reconciled. Um, why is he winning? Dagobar winning is winning because he is close to the source of power, Lorcan's heart and because he retains the passion of madness. While we settled into the lonely and unrewarding posture of dodge, dutifulness, and pres preservation. Preservance. And finally, perhaps, because he is a stronger and smarter than we are, and his followers are more fervent and fanatical. I believe we were careless and complacent and outwitted. And in matters of denying an airvine, we were foolish. Okay. Uh, how does a tribunal fight, they got for in a passage, Brian made seasonal campaigns to Red Mountain. We slew him and his kin through the horror, always revived them in time. There, when we realized we couldn't destroy them, we created the ghost fence to contain them. These solutions were effective until Dagoff er, ambushed us and captured Sunder and Keening. Since that time, our fortunes have waned and his increased. Okay. Uh, what are the Wave Guard's powers? Redguard's primary function is to protect the wearer from the fatal energies of artifacts Sunder and Keening. It also has minor protective enchantments against physical and magical damage that you might find useful. Uh, bitter recommendations. You want to chide me? Why did I murder Nerevar? Why did I break my oath to Azura and use Karganax tools? Why did I cause others to suffer? Yeah, I want to know. Why did you murder me? <laughs> We did not murder Nerevar. The legend that we murdered Nerevar comes from a story told by the shield companion to Nerevar, Andronal Sul, who lived among the Ashlanders. The Ashlanders have retained Alandro Sul's account as part of the oral histories. The account is persuasive in some details, and plausible in others, and is in any case false. I have two accounts of Nerevar's death here in my library. Read them, and judge for yourself. Alright, how do you break your oath? Along with the Lord Nerevar and his insistence, Elamixia, Sophisto, and I swore before our god of oath at the time, uh, the Daedra Lord Azura, never to employ the tools of Karganet for any purpose. We broke our oath. We turned our backs on the old gods. We still see no compelling reason to worship any of the Aedra or Daedra. But for the respect I held for Nerevar and respect I held for myself, I should have never betrayed my oath. Of all my life's actions, I most regret that failure. Uh, why do you cause others to suffer? No, why did I cause others to suffer? Okay. Why did I cause others to suffer? I respect that question, and you for it. The most I can say is, I did the best I could, as I saw things. Can you, mortal, presume to judge the actions and motives of a god? But because I need you and you need me, I'll make an accounting for my sins to you. But not now. Destroy dig off her, and then we will discuss my sins. And then perhaps... You have earned the right to judge me. Alright. Questions. We already have that. Explanations? No. Questions. Alright. You're curious what really happened at Red Mountain. What really happened to the drummer? Well, 
What is the drummer's sin? What is it like to be a god? Do I remember being mortal? How do I feel about the people? Yeah. What is Red Mountain? In my library, I have made available two conflicting accounts of the events of Red Mountain. My own true account, another false account, common among the Ashlanders, and preserved in the A Apographa. I don't care whether you believe my account or not. I leave it up to you to judge, which is true. What happened to the drummer? I have no clue what happened to the drummer. I have no sense of them in my timeless divine world at out of mortal time. And in fact, I did believe they existed. If I did believe they existed, I would be in no hurry to make contact with them. They may, with some justice, hold the dumber race responsible for their fate. My intuition is that they are gone forever. And that's perfectly fine with me. Was their sin? The sin of the drummer was the creation of a new god from the substance of a dead god, Lorcan. That is also the sin for which we could destroy the I hesitate to call it sin, or properly call it destructive evil. The sin of the tribunal, however, is in the breaking of oath to Azura, the forbear from tapping the heart with Karganath's tools, and in the folly of seeking to become gods. Breaking the oath was evil, becoming gods was folly. If we sinned, we have paid the price. Uh, what about the- No, 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 I don't want to know about that one. Be a god. Uh, it's like being a juggler. Things are always moving. You learn to know where they are without even thinking about it. I mean, there are many, many things moving. Sometimes, like any juggler, you drop something. I'm afraid it's become a lot more of a matter of dropping things lately. <laughs> There's too much to do, and not enough time, and I'm losing my touch. Perhaps I'm growing old. It is a bit like being at once awake and asleep. Awake, I'm here with you, thinking and talking. Sleep, I am very, very busy. Perhaps for other guys, the completely immortal ones. It's only like that being asleep. At a time. Me, I exist at once inside of time and outside of it. It's nice never being dead, too. <laughs> when I die in the world of time, then I'm completely asleep. I'm very much aware that's all I have to do is chose to wake. I'm alive again. Many times I very deliberately tried to wait patiently a very long, long time before choosing to wake up. No matter how long it feels like I wait, it always appears when I wake up that no time has passed at all. That is the God's place, the place out of time, where everything is always happening all at once. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, was it like being mortal? Do you remember? I remember. I do not feel it. I can, if I choose, remember the feeling, but I do not choose. It is very, very sad being mortal. There is happiness, yes, but mostly sadness. As I have said, count only the happy hours. For mortals, they're all too few. But for gods, for me, there is no more feeling. Only knowing. Not quite no more feeling. I still want to win. I want to defeat Digafer. Perhaps I have lost the feeling for the people, for their suffering. I don't want that feeling. It is of no use to me. That is no longer that matters to me. I only want to not lose. To lose would be very, very bitter. Okay. What do you feel about the people? I love the people, Morwen. Became a god to make their lives more comfortable and secure. I am most close to my faithful followers. I am literally in their hearts and minds. I feel the most sympathy with House Rhetoron. They are dumber driven by creeds and deeds, like I am. House Interrol is close to the compassion and sympathy of Alamixia, a comfortable and secure serenity. House Talvani matches the disposition of my brother, Salvasil. I am classic, profane, and unconventional. House Alulu represents the future of Dunmer, integrated into the sophisticated mainstream of the traditionalist, raceless, godless culture of the Empire. House Dress represents the past of the pre you know, great house culture, a persistent tradition of Daedra, an ancestor worshipping civilized Dunmer clans. And I even love the Ashlanders for preservation of the most ancient barbarian tribal traditions of the Dunmer who first settled more with. Alright, so we're learning a lot. Uh no 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 I want to ask you questions, you bastard. Um business. Alright, so basically he Yeah, he basically answered everything. Alright, so um since this is only for people who probably give a damn, you're probably wondering, um, 
about the story, and we will go to it. All right, plan to defeat Dago <clears throat> Let's see how long it is. It's really long. <laughs> I don't know if we got time, so I'm gonna turn this off, and we're gonna have the next part. So hold on. <laughs>